Raven County. It's Roger Glenn with POS Realty. Uh, we're here on a Friday afternoon. We got a limited uh, window of opportunity, but we're here with uh, Doug Nasser, who is the head distiller. Yeah, we'll call it that. Of, of Moonrise Distillery. Yep. We get paid to make booze and make people happy. Not a bad thing. <laughs> and you, you're telling us a little bit, doing a great job. Let's, let's just start with the easy part. Where are you located? So we're in Clayton, Georgia. So we're on 441. So we're on the same side as Home Depot and uh, Walmart over there. So we're about, uh, I guess, about 800 feet down from them up on the hill. Yep, just up on the hill. Just so the tell us a little bit about you and Jennifer's story and how you came to, to own and operate the distillery. Well, great question. So we, um, we started this endeavor, uh, I guess we bought Moonrise three years ago. So uh, we came up from Gainesville where we were doing another distillery project up there. And uh, by the grace of God, we got a phone call from the gentleman who had started Moonrise. And uh, he had started as a hobby and uh, had done some pretty good stuff up here and was, uh, was wanting to get out. So uh, by uh, serendipity, as we call it, it all came together. He, had, uh, he called us one day and said, hey, uh, heard you're doing some good things. I'd like you to come up and take a look at what I'm doing up here before you go buy anybody else. And so we came up here, he showed us around. We really liked what he had started. It was a great foundation. We fell in love with this community. And uh, you know, the interesting thing is that most communities like this, they grow like cauliflower, really tight and from the inside out. This community was open and willing to welcome new people. And the support that we received made it clear to us that this was a great place to create this business. So we did. Yeah. Can you talk just a little bit about um, the product line and their current product offerings? Sure. So, uh, so our view is pretty simple. We think there's people that like clear spirits. We think there's people that prefer top shelf brown spirits. But we also know there's a lot of people that no matter what spirit type they like, they really don't like straight alcohol. So we also created a line of ready to drink craft cocktails. Now we feel very, very strongly about the environment and also quality. So everything that we make here, no sugar, no high fructose corn syrup, no monosodium glutamate. Everything is made by hand. We use local ingredients wherever we possibly can. Yep. And we never put any yucky stuff in there, right? Yeah. So, uh, and it's amazing when you do it right, you can't make as much as the big mass produced, mass marketed guys do, but you can make some pretty good stuff. So we now have the two-time Best of Georgia gold medal winning vodka and gin. We've got a 96 rated bourbon uh, by Tasting Panel Magazine on a national level. So we beat out uh, folks like Woodford Reserve and Four Roses. We've got a better rating than they do now. Um, our rye whiskey just got number 13 in the United States. So, uh, so we've got some pretty good brown stuff too. Yeah. And, uh, so we pride ourselves on the fact that we have something for everybody. So if you don't like vodka and gin, we've got those ready to drink craft cocktails. You know, they're in a can and it blows people's minds that they're in a can uh, <laughs> because it's amazing stuff. It's still all made by hand. We just happen for convenience to put it in a can. Yeah. Uh, but we don't use any can. I don't have OCD and I've got, unfortunately, OCA through Z, I have them all. <laughs> right? So to get to the point where I was willing to take some things that my son CJ and I make uh, that are so good yeah. and to put them in a can, that was a hard bridge to cross. And fortunately, we got to work with a ball corporation and some really good scientists over there. And they've developed a can that has a special liner in it that up to 20% alcohol can't impart any of that metallic flavor or aroma. So uh, first time somebody takes a Bloody Mary that has Pomodoro tomatoes and fresh basil and oregano and all of that, and it comes out of a can, it about blows their minds. <laughs> yeah. so, um, so we've got those. And then of course, we also do uh, cordials and brandies. Mm -hmm. So uh, we work with local folks, a Stack Family Farm across the street. Great, 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 great family. So local stuff there. So we've got our you know apple brandy and our cognac style brandy. We do a peach yeah. brandy also. Uh, we do a family lemon cello, uh, three generation uh -huh. family recipe. Uh, again, no sugar. So it's local honey from our friends Blue Ridge Honey Company down the street, right? So the uh, it's kind of neat there. Uh, yeah. So from folks like Blue Ridge Honey, from folks like Red Oak Lavender Farm down in Dahlonega for our gin, you know, everywhere we possibly can, we like to use local stuff. Uh, but there's also collaborations that are important to us, right? Everything that we do here, if we can also tie in and partner with another local business, we love to do that. And fortunately, they were willing to do it with us. Right? So everything from Curahee Brewery uh, down the street, 
you know, we've done a couple collaborations. We've got one tomorrow night, uh, six o'clock, that we're unveiling on Saturday. That is a German style weeded beer that the owner of Curry and I did together. That um, instead of the wheat, we actually substituted some of our rye and then we aged it in a kind of what we call a sloppy rye barrel. Still got a little wow. bit of extra rye in there. Wow. So we're bringing that out for everybody. Uh, Stonewall <laughs> Creek, High Tower Creek. Local vineyards, we do ports with them. Uh, they age some of uh, their products in our barrels, which is neat. The uh, the only thing that's neater than getting a ton of gold medals yourself is when people you partner with use some part of what you do, and they can take their beautiful products and, and see success there. Yeah. That's really kind of neat. So, uh, so that's we're blessed with that, and then also. The amount of other businesses that send people our way and vice versa. You know, we like to think because we're on the line right here, we're kind of the unofficial visitors bureau, <laughs> right? So people that come up here from out of town and they come and they spend a few hours with us, yeah. And they're looking for a place to stay. We'll send them to Beachwood Inn and we'll send them to all the other folks. You know, that are just everybody up here seems to really care about their business and cares about their customers. It's a different yeah. place. It's a very special place. Um, so you not only make some great products, but you were talking to me about the experience. Can you just talk about some of the things for folks that haven't been up here? Tours, music, events, uh, food, <laughs> and how you approach that? Sure. So the, uh, the net of it all is we like to value ourselves, kind of position ourselves as a teaching distillery. Right? So back in the day, you used to be able to go to the Bourbon Trail. You could meet with a master distiller. You could learn things experience things just have a really good time and uh, unfortunately now that's become very commercial so what we aspire to be here is that kind of experience you're going to come here you can do a tour you can do a tasting you can just come to the cocktail bar and just have a craft cocktail made with some of the best stuff we make uh, but we want you to walk away with a great experience right people want create an experience you want to come back to the reason we put it in 94 proof you know who Ian Fell Fleming is? The guy that wrote the James Bond series. Okay? So, 007. Well, every self-respecting martini drinker knows that a martini is stirred, not shaken. The problem is, when the screenwriters got involved, they turned it, because they didn't like the way it sounded when they said it. So they turned it to shaken, not stir subsequently ruining millions of martinis <laughs> from that when we pull it. So, I put this gin at 94 proof because if you're going to stir a martini as you should, you have to stir it for three minutes. Alcohol and water don't like to play together. So if you don't want a bitter martini, if you don't want a martini where it's alcohol then maybe flavor, then you need to stir it for three minutes and you need to give that water time to interfuse with the alcohol. Right? It's kind of like, remember the first time you ever tried to drive a stick shift and you tried to find third gear and it just stopped and then it bounced a little bit and then it went into gear? Well, that's what we need the alcohol and the water. Every failed miserably, yeah. The first, second, third, fourth. Yeah, there you go. All right, try that. Back to bring somebody else, right? Yep. And a backstory, right? This part of the country, amazing history, right? Yeah. A backstory that you can connect to. So we try to do that. Uh, from a food perspective, we like to highlight the other food providers in our town. So we don't provide food directly. Right? So what we do is we offer to all the different chefs in town uh, to cater out of our cater yep. right? And So we don't want to charge them anything. We just we want our customers to experience a great culinary experience. Right? And we want to partner and get those other folks' names out there. Yeah. And in return, God bless them, they just send people to us all day long. <laughs> so, it's yeah. symbiotic, and I think what I hear, I get to be in front of about 6,000 people every month, and what I hear constantly is the other owners of other businesses just provide an amazing experience to our customers, and they love that about this area. And I don't think you can realize until you've been everywhere else just how special this place is. So we're, uh, Jen and I talk a lot about how we used to drive across the country and you come into a small town and you say, gosh, this is such an amazing place. What do people do for a living that they get to live here? <laughs> we just, every day we count our blessings that we're able to live in a place like this. So, yeah. uh, 
but we want to share that experience with people. Yeah. Uh, so when they leave, not only do they appreciate Moonrise, not only do they appreciate uh, Raven County and Clayton, but also the next time they have an opportunity to go to a craft winery or a craft distillery or a craft brewery, they're going to do it because they had an amazing experience. Yeah, and a little bit more um, knowledge too. And uh, on the events, uh, I, we noticed on the website, we've got the musical calendar and some of the musicians will be here. I think out till December, so that's a great resource for people to check out what's going yeah. on. The uh, last thing, because I, I know you're pressed for time, we got people anxious to take <laughs> the next tour. Um, but uh, the future, what, what's what's on the horizon for Moonrise Distillery? You were showing us some of the properties, so. Well, again, thanks to the fact that our customers are constantly coming back. We don't have a day that goes by that we don't have a repeat customer uh, bringing other people back or a referral. Uh, we're out of space. So the exciting thing is we've got two barrel house expansions going on right now. Uh, we've also got a brand new speakeasy cocktail bar and, and uh, outdoor patio going on. And uh, so sort of we're very excited about that. Uh, the other thing is every Friday night, we now, our music bingo that started with a handful of people, we're now taking reservations for, right? <laughs> so, uh, so it's really neat. On Fridays, we do that. Every Sunday, two to five, we've got our live music out on our band stage. So we put that band stage out there. And uh, again, a community like this, we all coordinate, right? Different businesses kind of have different events each night. So we do Sunday, two to five, because we don't want to compete with things that are going on downtown. But uh, we also kind of laugh, we do it all year round. So every Sunday, and uh, we found was we used to do it on a schedule, and then what we decided was it was just too difficult to keep track of. So now people know every Sunday there's live music at Moonrise. Every Friday night there's music bingo. So we'll continue to do that. We're excited to be able to do that once the new, uh, the new facility is up and going. So thank goodness we, uh, we're busy. Yeah. Thank goodness that we've got great support from the community. And, uh, so we'll continue to do this the best we possibly can, uh, using local ingredients wherever we can, and uh, you know, trying to make sure that Raven County, uh, we do them proud. Yeah, incredibly impressed. I mean, it's beautiful indoor, outdoor, with what you're doing in the way of expansion. The products speak for themselves, obviously, but the experience, which I think is really about you and Jennifer. So. Uh, we are delighted to have you as part of Raven well, County, even though I'm, I'm certainly not the, uh, the greeting committee. And, and folks, if you haven't been out, uh, you should come out and try it for yourself. And I, I would uh, suggest that there's probably about a 99.9% .9 possibility that you're going to bring some friends back uh, because they'll want to experience this um, as well. So, Doug, thank you again for well, taking we appreciate some time it. with thank us. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, God bless. See you next time, Raven County. Mm -hmm.